Hey everyone, welcome to Fashion Design with Hannah. Today we'll be doing some organic tie-dyes with turmeric. And trust me, it's going to get messy, so make sure you wear some clothes that you don't care about. The recipe that I'm using is from Pink Fortitude, and I'll link that down below in the description. I'll leave a list of supplies that you need in the description below, along with on the screen. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and like the video and leave a comment below on any other dyes that you'd like to see me try out. I haven't tie-dyed in a while, so this will be fun to see what happens. So let's get to it. Alright, so here's my Pikachu shirt. It's uh, from a Uniqlo Pokemon collection. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting by adding some yellow tie-dye to highlight around Pikachu. I'm going to try for a yellow similar to Pikachu using turmeric and I can't wait for it because I want Pikachu to be the center and maybe make him look like he has some thunderbolts coming around him. So we're just going to start off with the water. So we're going to add four cups for every one cup of vinegar. I'm actually doing two shirts today. <laughs> because one shirt was just kind of looking bad. We usually use two cups vinegar for one shirt, so I'm gonna add in 16 cups. This is gonna be fun. I already lost track. And then we're going to grab our vinegar. I'm going to add it in four cups because I doubled the recipe. I'm just using distilled white vinegar for this. And just a little bit more vinegar, I guess. So then we just want to turn this on and we're going to let it simmer for an hour. Keep it nice and low and you can use, you know, sticks or anything, but I'm using some nice chopsticks and then you can use it to adjust your t-shirts as necessary. Your t-shirts as necessary. You can talk. You just want to make sure that it doesn't boil down too much and that your fabric doesn't get burned. Make sure that's all covered as well. Now this is a, a dye pot, not a regular cooking pot, because eventually dye is going to go in there and even though this is turmeric, I don't think that you should be eating out of the same pot that you dye in. It's just good practice. And then for the turmeric, we're going to make that in a separate pot. I'm just using some organic turmeric and they said use about one ounce. This is 2.38 ounces. So we're just going to use a little bit less than half. Okay, and then I'm going to add water in. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> Alright, so then we're going to go ahead and add in one cup of water. Make sure that's all nice and done. On this and stirred up. Be careful while stirring everywhere as it can get quite messy very easily. Oh. Hi there. We're gonna let these two simmer for an hour. Make sure that you stir these every couple of minutes so that way nothing burns. Here's the turmeric. It's thickened up a little. And then we're just going to drain the shirts. Mm, it's 
smell of vinegar in the afternoon. Then we get to, ow, ow, ow. okay. That was a mistake. <laughs> you're gonna let the shirts cool a little bit and then you're gonna wring them out. Once you guys can handle it, then you just wring it out. I wouldn't suggest rinsing it out because the vinegar is the fixant or mordant for these, which helps the dyes stay in the fabric. So we're just gonna wring it out till it's not sopping wet, but still a little damp. Alright, so with the dye, you're gonna put it in a container that you will be dispersing it with. I suggest a squirt bottle, but since I do not have one, I'm using a glass jar. And at least this is heat resistant, because this is still pretty hot. Nice hot jar of dye. You can make a nice golden milk with this. Although I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> When it turns out that you're losing daylight quick. This day turned out to be a little bit windy too, but I would suggest doing everything outside because again, turmeric is a great dye and it will dye pretty much anything you have. So, you have your shirts all wrung out. I actually have a clean surface. Maybe the arugula pots weren't so good after all, but these will be washed anyway. So, you take your damp shirt we're gonna start the actual tying and dyeing. Woo! So for my Pikachu shirt, I want Pikachu to not have any dye. So I'm going to tie him off. Make sure that I get every bit of him not dyed. And then from there, I'm going to, let me just get a better angle for the camera. That's where all of your rubber bands come in. So I tied off Pikachu. So now uh, a Pikachu ghost, perfect for the season. <laughs> and then I kind of want it to be like electric bolts coming away. So I think I'm gonna do that by tying off these three sections here. I'm going to make slight stripes coming out in a twisted way. Of course, it's all up to you how you want to do this. I am freestyling it right now. I actually haven't tie-dyed that much, believe it or not. So I'm making it up. What's a little bit of creativity without a little bit of uncertainty? Put a little thicker rubber band to ensure that not as much dye gets there. Oh no, my nails are already starting to turn yellow. I think I'll do three bands. There'll just be this fun little tail out here. So the longer you let your t-shirt sit, the more saturated they will become. So I'm probably going to let these sit out here until absolute night. So right now it's like 2 o'clock when I'm filming this. So I'll probably let it sit for like 6 hours, maybe 7 hours. If you're doing this at night, just let it sit overnight. It'll be a nice great color unless of course you want a pale yellow. Last leg, everyone. Woo. So now we have our braided ghost, and we'll see how that goes. Ooh, Here's Pikachu. Now, before I actually tie dye that one, here's my FI t shirt. I got free tank top. I just kind of want to liven it up. 
And you'll do a swirl one with this one, a modified swirl. One that everyone's familiar with. I'm gonna block out my tiger mania. Ooh, FIT. You know, this is what they're looking for when they say you go all out for projects and fashion design. They really expect you to have time to go out, dye your own fabric. What kind of full-time fashion design student is time to it? We got this all sectioned off. I'm gonna do the modified swirl. So we're gonna put this in the center and then just swirl up everything underneath it. All right, so that swirl is that classic pattern where you just ball it up while twisting it in the center. Well, I twisted the center and put my tie-dye bands around there. So we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be fun. All right, so for Pikachu, oh, first of all, whoa, whoa, whoa. Got a head start here. Put your gloves on or else you're going to end up with extreme stains. And this is where the clothes you don't care about come in handy. Okay, so no to Pikachu. You know, maybe I'll just like paint it. Now I know tie dye is supposed to be somewhat random, but oh, I'm missing it everywhere. Oh boy. Yeah, get a squirt bottle, guys. <laughs> that works a lot better. So yeah, tie-dye is supposed to be random. You can somewhat plot it out. Just putting some in the middle of each of these little spider legs that I've given them. And rather than wasting the dye that's on the table, I'm just gonna let it soak in. It's all part of the design, right? Make it till you make it. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over, making sure Pikachu still stays out of the dye that's on the table. I'm gonna repeat. Now keep in mind that we are going to rinse this afterward. Ooh. So the color is going to lighten, so it won't stay this beautiful golden orange yellow color. <laughs> Look at these gloves. Oh boy. Okay, set this to the side. I already got turmeric on there. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll keep it. Sounds like a little balloon. Stay up, balloon. Don't give in to the wind. Ah, don't. No, no. Oh, we're starting to get to the really thick parts of the dye. You know, I'm pretty sure you could add some more water if you wanted. It's almost like going to lunch and then getting it all spilled up on your shirt. Oh, that does not look good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, stop. Control, must control. So I think that's it. I don't want to waste this dye though. I'm going to start hand dyeing over here. So I think I'm done here and I'm just going to let it sit. Oh, my gloves. At least those aren't my hands. Haha, <laughs> suckers. And look at all this pigment just sitting here. Do you want this in your house? No. So I'm gonna leave the dye jar out here as well. I'm just gonna let these sit. Here's the dye. And then here's the Pikachu monster. Pikachu's still up there. I think that one did okay in avoiding turmeric. And all the spindly legs. It's so spooky. So yeah, I'm just gonna let these rest here for like five, six hours, and then I'll rinse them out and show you guys how they did. Hey everyone, so it's now about midnight, which means it's the perfect time to wash out our tie-dyes. All right, so this is definitely a put on new gloves moment. 
the other gloves were full of dye. So the goal here is to wash out all of this dye until it runs clear. I'm actually going to do that while it's knotted up just to see if I can preserve some more white space. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but that's the goal. Mm, that is a lovely color. I do like that. Oh no. See, I did get some turmeric in the center. Oh well, you don't live and you learn. Oh well, I do have some extra dye just in case. I just took some excess dye from the other one and sprinkled it in a little bit. I doubt this will look nice, but I tried. So I think it's a safe bet to say that if you really want to dye something yellow, turmeric is definitely the way to go. Now on to the second one. Right now, there's only a tiny bit that went over. Hopefully I can keep it that way as I wash this out. All right, so this one I don't care too much about it, like all the white space turning yellow because it is centered around Pikachu and it's an electric type Pokemon. So might as well have a whole bunch of yellow. Make sure you get all of those excess pieces of dye off. This is just your initial wash. Because you know, <laughs> this is just your initial wash. And then we're gonna do a second wash after this to make sure that it is dye fast. I would also suggest wringing these out so they can dry a little bit better overnight. I think I am just gonna leave these knotted. I doubt it'll get that dry overnight. It is starting to get pretty cold here in New York. Don't have much heat to help things evaporate. Okay, and there is the Pikachu monster. Pikachu did actually get a little bit up top. I think I'll just leave this one in the pot overnight. Maybe a little bit easier to control where it lands. All right, so it's morning of day two, guys, and it's time to unknot the tie-dyes and see what we've got. All right, so you're gonna put your I don't care clothes on again and gloves, because this is gonna get messy again. So I'm gonna take apart my FIT one first, band number two, because I took one band off last night. Got excited, thought maybe I'd take them all off. Then I didn't. <laughs> So definitely have gloves that fit you if you want to do this. All right, so it's still got a lot of orange on it, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. I got a little bit of array going around. Let's see what the back looks like. I'll give you guys a better shot when I go outside to dry these. All right, so if you see here, we still have a little bit of excessive dye, but that should come off in the wash. It's right underneath my tiger. All right, so I took the other one outside, which I'll show you guys right after I take this one apart and take it outside. All right, I can't emphasize enough how much better it'd be if you had gloves that fit you. Okay, now I'm just gonna go bring this outside and give you a review out there. So I don't know if you guys will be able to hear me because there's some construction going on nearby and some wind, but here's the tie-dye. We have the FIT shirt. I think that's looking pretty cool. And on top of that, the accident actually kind of now looks like it's an outline for it's not, okay? And then for Pikachu, 
I think we did him some justice. It looks like there's a lot of movement going around. And for that little accidental turmeric, I think it's fine. I think it actually looks kind of cute. All right, there you have it. So I'm just gonna let these two dry out here for a little bit. They're still pretty damp. And once I feel like they're dry enough, I'll do a wash and it'll get out all the extra dye like this and just make sure that it's a little bit more dye fast. So it's been about five hours since these have been outside and I forgot and forgot to mention that leaving them out in the sun will make the color lighter and less saturated. So you can see the difference between the top, which was sun exposed, and the bottom. So I have the other one in the wash right now and we'll see how they come out. <laughs> All right, so here's how the FI t-shirt turned out for the front, the part that was sun exposed, and here we have the back. So as you can see, the back is definitely brighter. My sun exposure did not do any justice to it. And here lies the Pikachu shirt. This is the sun exposed side. And here is the Pikachu back. Now as you can see, the washing machine did lighten it up a little bit, but that is bound to happen with any dye. So yeah, it was really just my sun exposure that was the issue. Am I a little disappointed in the tie dye? Yes, but I actually still have a little bit of the dye left. So I kind of want to give it a second go and do a late night fix it edition in true old FIT student fashion. <laughs> so now that I have my Pikachu ghost and my FIT ghost, I'm going to fill the pot back up with some water and vinegar. I think I'll probably cut it in half, but the fabric that I want to be dyed is what I want to be submerged in water and vinegar. I don't want these two to be in the water and vinegar, simply so that way they don't uptake as much dye should there be another accidental dye. So I still have this much of the dye left, but I do think it needs to be revived a little. See how it's sticking? I don't want that to stick. I want it to be a little bit more liquid, as most people know dye to be. So I'll add some more water and a little bit more turmeric to it, and put it in for probably about half as long for a simmer time as compared to the shirt soak. Mmm, chunko dye. Alright, so I've already put probably about a quarter cup of water in there. Let's see if I can get a little bit more turmeric in here. Probably about another quarter cup that I just added. Credence Clear Water Turmeric Revival, here we come. The shirt soaking is all done and dye is all revitalized so now it is time to do ye old shirt draining and wait for those to cool off and then we'll start dyeing again. I'm actually going to do this in the basement at this point because it is cold and damp outside so inside is now my option at this nice late night. I'm not going to say the time. Late night. <laughs> so I am going to use the old paintbrush to see if I can sort of recreate what I saw earlier on shirts that I actually really liked and then I'll let them dry down here. Hopefully I will be smart and remember not to put these out in the sun to dry. I don't think that's too hard since we're in the basement. Now the tie dye is definitely known for being a little bit more random. So I'm trying to add it some slightly random looking dye. Oh, 
let's play around and just do that little thing that I originally didn't like. I think I might have watered this down a little bit more than what I liked, but maybe it'll develop a tiny bit darker. So my camera mount broke, so that's fun. But I think this is the best angle that I'm going to be able to get for you guys. And you know what's interesting is as I was looking at the before and current pictures, I think the vinegar actually reinvigorated the yellow color. So that's fun. On to Pikachu. I think I am done with both of these for tonight. I'll let them sit overnight and see what happens. Hopefully these can be nice and saturated and work to my advantage. Make up for this afternoon. Thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions for other type of dyes you'd like me to try, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and like the video. Bye! So let's get to it.